I think we are. We got through the countdown timer. Judge, welcome. Hello, everyone. If you are joining live, we're hoping this is working. And it is the Facebook business page for Boomtank, theboomtank.com. Here's the thing. And we talked about this earlier, you and me, about doing things on your business page, how it's short-sighted to build from your personal page all the time, sometimes sure, but all the time, because sure. then you're limiting your growth to 5,000 people. Take the pain as I'm taking it today, and Judge is going to take it with me. He's such a, taking one for the team. I love you for that. So we're <laughs> going to take the pain today, and we're going to stream onto a page that maybe no one will show. And you know what we do on the other side of it? I put some ads to it, and I bring some traffic to it and I just keep going and building it because you have to take the short term pain for the long term gain. Would you agree with that, Judge? I totally agree with it. I love it. I love your energy and uh, I'm thrilled and excited to be on. Oh, thrilled to have you. It's a complete honor. Thank you very much for joining us. For all of you watching, thank you. For those of you catching the replay, thank you very much. If you have comments throughout the live stream, please leave comments below. We will be watching those. Also comment if you're watching on a replay. We'll be sure to answer you. I am Carolyn Cole. I'm going to do formal introductions of myself and then my amazing guest, Judge. And yes, he has sold hundreds of millions of dollars in terms of selling his own companies. It's amazing. Um, what you've done is incredible, right? Thank Hundreds you. of millions of dollars. Yeah. All right. So I am Carolyn Cole, and I'm going to read this because it's fast. I'm a global executive and business consultant and coach. I work with C-suite executives, business executives, business owners, entrepreneurs, and professionals. For nearly two decades, I was a Fortune 100 and Fortune 200 senior company trial attorney. Now I make the case on behalf of your business dreams, your professional dreams, and happiness too. Let's see what else I want to offer in here. Uh, I am founder of Boomtank.com and show host of the global Boomtank business show. And Boomtank is where success and happiness meet. Please check out the show on iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Overcast, Spotify, Google Play, and tune in. It's all of those places. How about that, Judge? That's all amazing. Over. I love it. It's a lot of fun. All right. Ed. present. Yeah, sounds good. Um, all right, so we've covered this, covered that. I think that about covers it for now. Let me just ask you, if you enjoy this video, please share it with someone else. Share it to your page. I'd be indebted to you. I'll certainly thank you publicly for doing that. Please, please, please like my business page. As I say, I'm trying to build the following there where it's going to be going next, and that's what I'm where I'm taking it. And just like it, and I'll I'll salute you for that. Please like forward slash the boom tank and please contact me if you have business or consulting needs with a business redesign with success in mind. And that is one of my programs designed to get you and your business out of struggle to success. My other programs are a life redesign with success and happiness in mind. And that's pretty much a life reinvention piece for busy executives and professionals. And if you are interested in creating and claiming your own new power personal brand, please contact me. I help you create your expert celebrity, claim all of your expert celebrity, and then prepare you with a media one sheet that's professionally done. You get media one sheet templates, professional talk creation, professional public speaking techniques, a power bio that I write for you, power topics, and a whole bunch of other stuff. All of my programs are loaded, so please contact me, Carolyn at boomtank.com, if you are interested. Judge, what is your website for everybody to find you? We'll just do it at the top of the top of the show. What is your sure, website? Uh, Judgegram.com. Okay. Nice and easy. That was, yeah. that was fast. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and right, Graham, so. like uh, the cracker, G-R-A-H-A-M. Okay. Here's what I'm going to do at this point. Let me pause for just a moment and let me pull this up on my business page to make sure if we have comments, we're watching them. Okay. So do you like Be Live TV? You like this format, Judge? Yeah, I think it's great. I mean, I, uh, I tried to, I did my first Facebook uh, business live last week and realized you couldn't do it on the uh, laptop. You needed to do it on the phone. So this is a great potential solution for that. So yeah, this is good. It is. And we talked earlier that I have a full service webinar service that I have Zoom. I use Zoom for my client calls, right? And my group calls. But for webinar, I don't use Zoom because they're not as webinar uh, ready as other webinar services, shopping cart, autoresponders, email captures, those kinds of things. So I think BeLive is a nice alternative for this. Yeah, so let me nice. I like it so far. 
Yeah, yeah. Let me tell all the folks about Amazing You. Here is Judge Graham, and he spelled his name for you. He is the scale with speed king, and that's his trademark. So that's already taken, gang. And he has sold his own companies for hundreds of millions of dollars. Judge is a media personality, a serial entrepreneur, an author, and a speaker, and a whole lot more. You really are. You've got a lot going on there, guy. Big stuff. Thanks. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Judge is a hard-hitting, action-oriented serial entrepreneur with a successful track record of growing companies with little to no revenue and selling them for multi-millions and hundreds of millions of dollars. I just have to stop there because congratulations. That's simply amazing. And we're going to talk about all that. Thank okay? You. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> That's <laughs> I'm, I still, I look at that and here you are. It's just so impressive. Judge has also helped hundreds of small companies and Fortune 500 companies focus on growth and capitalize on opportunities to improve revenue and corner markets through integration of cutting edge positioning, culture, technology, and sales. Judge lives in Dallas, Fort Worth with his wife, Jordan, and their two boys, Jake and Jet. Join Join us now. So here we are. So is there anything else you want to add to that to that intro for you and today? No, show? it's a great intro. I I, uh, I love that. Thanks. I'm super excited to be uh, on the show. And um, no, it's perfect. Okay, so we've got people on here. Thank you for coming on the page. Larissa Rolla, you are a sweetheart. Thank you very much. Larissa is an amazing photographer. She travels all over the world and takes amazing pictures. I'm trying to see who else is here. It's a new format for us, so it's a bit more difficult to see. But thank you. Uh, Yashira is on. Yashira is a luxury uh, real estate home sales marketing specialist. She sells right. luxury homes and markets them in the most amazing um, technological way, all modern luxury brand. And she She's in Dallas, Fort Worth, too. So she's oh, too. Great. We should connect. Yeah. Welcome, Yashir. That's fantastic. All right, Judge, let's talk about this. We're going to start with the, the big the big piece, which is you have sold your own personal business, businesses, and we're not going to go for the exact figure, but in the hundreds of millions, okay? You sit here and you look like an exceptional guy, really nice, really smart, on the ball. How do you sit here today with someone with that kind of success and be so incredibly normal. I would like to think I would be, and I think I'm sure my guests would feel the same way. But <laughs> what's that like, because we talk, we're going to get into it. You started young entrepreneurial selling pencils to be where you are in life now, having sold hundreds of millions of dollars relating to the sales of your own companies. How does that feel to you for success? I mean, what is that feeling of success like, and does it make you happy? Yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah, it's 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 amazing. I mean, when you hit financial freedom, it allows you to think about things differently. And it's uh it's great. Yeah. Everything is is fantastic and it it changes your purpose, right? You start focusing on, you know, bigger and and you know, even better things. I think that real true entrepreneurs, they don't stop, right? There's there's really not a ceiling. There's always something next, right? And so my new journey is I want to take the failures I've had and the mistakes I've had and the mistakes I've had, um, and the success that I've had, and then scale that for other business owners and executives. Okay. And we're going to talk about that because that's your, your scaling, the speed around scaling program. So we're going to talk about that today because it's very important. Business owners languish and we're going to talk about why you think that is. So let's look at winning in business because that's the theme of the show. And I want to go back to your younger days. And the question is always when I talk with really successful business owners and entrepreneurs, were you always this way? So what is your answer to that question? Going back to your childhood, were you always entrepreneurial at heart? hundred percent. So I can, I tell this story often. So my mother was an art teacher um, and she still is actually an art teacher. And at the time I was in first, second grade, and she brought me home this really cool box of pencils. There was like a hundred pencils in there and they had cool designs on them. <clears throat> and I looked at those pencils and I said, people at school need pencils and these are really cool. So imagine, you know, this young, young boy in first grade, second grade, I take these hundred pencils and over a two week span, I sell them each for a, a dollar a piece. So I made 200 bucks at this, at this young age. And then wow. I started to learn the power of selling and persuasion and what it felt like to make money at such a young age. And I remember the, uh, the headmaster called and said, I either got good news and bad news. You've got a serial entrepreneur on your hands, but we're also having to suspend him for a day because he's, he's sold all these pencils. But yeah, it started for me at a really young age. And isn't that crazy? You got in trouble for that. 
And now yeah. here you are in this show being celebrated for it and around the world. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, I know it is. What, what do we do to our kids when they're growing up? It's just madness, right? So with the entrepreneurial thing, did that come from your family or was that just something within you? I think it's a combination of both. I mean, I think it's, I think uh, a lot of it, you're, it's in you. It's, it's, it's a part of your being, but also, you know, I had really hardworking parents, you know, it, it all times two to three jobs. So I was brought up in an environment where I understood, you know, that things, you know, didn't come easy. Um, I couldn't have all the things that I wanted. And I saw my parents work really, really hard to provide what, um, what they could provide. When you met your parents who had jobs, did you look at them and say to yourself, I'm not doing that. I'm going to find another way. Did you do that? Or was it just, just something else that triggered the entrepreneurial spirit in you? Do you think? Yeah, no, I think, um, <clears throat> because they were entrepreneurial. I mean, they had regular jobs and then that would call kind of side hustle entrepreneurial jobs, whether selling real estate or mortgages or a t-shirt business or a prom decorating business. So I definitely picked up some of that entrepreneurial bug. Um, within within my family, for sure. But I think that it's always been a part of what I what I wanted to do. When you fast forward now, you we talked in the pre chat that you've read all the leading business books. You have a solid foundation in business, and we talked about when did you start winning in business. And as you say, that is a very subjective type of question because success is defined differently by different people, right? It's just it's just me. me it, whatever it is to you, it is to you. But you said in your twenties, you were you were hitting on six figures, right? So let's go into your success around your first sale of your business, the the bigger bigger the biggest sale you've ever done. What was it? about you that got that business scaled, got you productive? How did you learn to build something that big and sell it for what you sold it for? Well, it's a, in our, it's a huge team effort, right? When you're, when you're operating at that level, there's private equity involved. There's other major executives. <clears throat> this wasn't something I just carried on my, my shoulders. And I think that's important for people to understand as they scale and grow their businesses with speed. So if you want to grow a monster business, it's about the people. It's about the culture, right? And so it's aligning with the right folks and putting them in the right positions and then, you know, striving towards hitting that goal. You know, that's something <clears throat> I'm a huge team person. I uh, pay, played a, a small stint of college athletics at TCU. I played football for a little bit. <clears throat> and I think the fundamentals that you learn um, with teamwork, right, what it feels like to lose what it feels like to win, what it takes in preparation and hard work to win. Those are all very translatable skills that translate into to business at, at any scale. And I would say selling a company for, you know, a couple million bucks to several hundred million bucks. The process is very similar. It's just the stakes are higher. Okay. What kinds of businesses are these that you have sold? So my whole background is um, very digital marketing advertising agencies. So anything from software um, development to web design to online, you know, digital marketing ads with a very um, niche focus in direct response. Okay. Yashira wants to know what your top three business books are. I will just take one. We won't put you on the spot. Just one top business book that you recommend. Might as well grab that. Great question, Yashira. Might as well grab that now. What do you think? Yeah, great. I mean, I right now um, I'm a big Grant Cardone fan, so 10x is probably um, I like his just direct, no nonsense, and it's it's a great message, right? I think that anything you think, and I actually had a coaching session yesterday with um, someone that wants to start a new business, and you know, it really is 10x. Whatever you think that effort is, it's going to be 10 times that. And I think that you don't have an appreciation of it until you're in it, but you should prepare yourself if you think it's going to take, you know. A year, it's probably going to take a lot longer to figure things out. Yeah, I listened to 10X on Audible. And when you're done listening to it, you're just kind of like it's and I don't even drink coffee. I drink no caffeine, but I felt like I just had guzzled like gallons of it after that. book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. It's a great fire up book. Yeah, yeah totally. It's pretty 
All right, let's see what else we've got on here. Larissa, thank you. Sheer, thank you. Okay, so we're get, thank you for coming to my business page, Ghost Town. But we're happy, happy, happy to be rolling along with this. When you decided to sell your businesses, and now you've moved into, and and we're talking hundreds of millions of dollars involved in the sales of your own companies. Now you're moving into. You're still based in companies. Now you're moving into an arena where you're helping business people. Tell us about that work and that shift for you. Yeah, it's 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 great. I mean, I I love um, my hobby is business. I love the sport of business. Um, what was fascinating for me in the career I chose, being in marketing and specifically digital, I got to work across all sectors from helping you know companies sell um, lamps to Frito Lay's to Dr Pepper's to so it was it was great kind of learning all those sectors and really what I'm doing now is is having people understand the really core fundamentals. If you're trying to grow a, a business, revenue is the lifeblood, right? How are you creating recurring revenue? What does your sales organization look like? How do you quickly make decisions and how do you scale a business that's going to be worth something that you can sell at a, a certain time? I mean, it's fascinating. I'll sit down and ask business owners and they're five or six years into their business, what's your end game? And they don't have one, right? So I help crystallize what do you want out of this business? And then I help them provide what it's going to take to get what they want out of that business. All right. So let me ask you, people watching now live, Yashira, Larissa, and people coming in for the replay. Let's say they have a goal to be a multimillionaire in business and maybe they're philanthropic on the other side of it. That's their end game. And they've read two things. They've read you start a business to sell a business or you start a business to do whatever you want to do so that it keeps you fulfilled. I mean, those are the two camps, right? Some people believe you start a business with the end game of simply to sell it. Other people say it becomes part of your life and you just, that's how you actualize yourself and your creativity through that. E on either camp, they have decided they want to be multimillionaires, right? So if you're sitting down with them because you've had this hundreds of millions of dollars, so you've, you've, you've had the pinnacle. I know you're probably looking at a billion would be a pinnacle for you, but let's say that's the pinnacle for most of the people watching this replay right now, right? Millions of dollars and they want to do good work with it. What would you say to them if, and they're all in business, okay, and they, they're in it maybe one, two, three years, maybe four years, maybe five, and they haven't quite reached that success and happiness that they're looking for, right? They're, they, they haven't scaled the way they need to scale. What, where would you first start working with them? Would you just work in their head? Would you work on paper? What would you do with them? Yeah, the, the first place I start always is I'm a firm believer in niche will get you rich. In the whole concept of an inch wide and a mile deep. So typically, I try to bring that business owner or that executive out of the weeds and get them up a little bit more of a 30,000 foot view and really understand what are we selling? What's your core offering? What's the value proposition? Is it price? Is it value? Is it service? Do you have a differentiator? Are you spread too thin? So I really hone in on what do you have that's unique? And that we can actually start to scale to get those success and the goals that you want to attain. Because usually it's like a hamster in a wheel. You're just running, right? People um, don't prioritize on the activities that will help them scale. And they get involved in a lot of busy work and they start chasing things that lose focus. I help bring in and make that focus laser and put together systems and frameworks to hold accountability. How do you scale from being, say, a couple hundred thousand dollars a year to break the, that million dollar, multi-million dollar mark? You, you have to have um, the right framework, 100%. So again, it's starting with the value proposition. And, and something else I'm, you know, you'll appreciate that I'm in the process of trademarking is business green space. So I'm a firm believer in the whole concept of business green space is, is really it's your niche, right? What is that unique offering that you're providing that's untapped. Because what I found is if you, the more niche that you get, the, the more opportunity you have to become the expert, the better people you, you can get, the processes become easier. And so I really focus in on here is the niche and the, does that niche scale? What, what, what kind of market is even there? Can you be a hundred million dollar organization based on what you're offering now? So that's kind of the core fundamental work. And then once you figure that out, you just back into the plan. 
you know, what effort is taken, you know, to, to scale this, what kind of marketing dollars do we need to put against it? You know, how many sales and at what level do you need to be doing a month? Do you have the right team in place to do that? And it just becomes a puzzle and all those puzzles start to get in place. And I think the core thing that I bring that most organizations don't have is creating a rhythm. People and organizations need to have this constant rhythm, right? Cultures need alignment, transparency, and rhythm. And if as the leader of an organization, if you clearly articulate, here's who we are, here's where we're going, and here's how you're going to help, and you share that vision and dream, and then you execute in a, in a cadence and a rhythm, it, success becomes easy. Mm-hmm. You get the momentum. Momentum's key, you know, and, and I, I focus a lot on the intangibles. You know, mm-hmm. it's easy to come in and look at PL optimizations and um, numbers and, and things that are very tangible, and those are all quickly fixable. But the intangibles, again, if you want to grow a monster business, I don't care if it's service based or it's product, it's widgets, your capital is your people and your products. And if you don't focus on creating a world class culture and have these intangibles and these momentums, in these moments to get people swimming in Kool-Aid, right. And totally aligned on your vision, you'll never scale to, to, to where you're possible to your potential. When you said earlier, I put frameworks in place, explain to members of the audience what a framework is to you. So a framework for me is, and, and I like to keep everything very simple, right? My whole philosophy is speed. So I make decisions quickly. I act quickly. I'm, I'm your speed check right here. I love that. Yeah. And, and, and I'll yeah. make 15 decisions before the average person makes one. And even if 10 of them are wrong, I've course corrected and I've moved so much faster, right? I'm so believe in you need to be first to market. You've got to prove things out. You've got to change. You've got to be the innovator to get that attention. And so my frameworks, I call them a one page attack and conquer plan. This isn't a business plan. It's not a vision board. It's not a goal. It's a very succinct plan that maps out, here's our target. Here are, who, here are the goals and, and the things that we needed to get there. Here are the clear owners. Here are the expectations. And here's the rhythm and cadence that we're going to do to get there. And here's the vision and the core values and the culture that we're going to implement implement in order to get us there. That's what a, a framework is for me. I love that. You know, I, a lot of the people that are signing on, they're solopreneurs. And then we have business owners. Then we have advanced business owners. I mean, it has the audience is varied, right? It's people that are uber successful and people just starting. I don't know why in the solopreneur space or the solo business owner space, there isn't m- more joint venturing, like teams actually coming together because one person to scale is a nightmare. It's not going to happen that way. You have to have a team behind you. And when you're starting in business and building your business, if you can't build that team around you, then go joint venture to get a team, right? Because then you end up feeling faster. So you believe in that? You like that idea? I I, I totally do. I mean, I'm a firm believer. And again, there's nothing wrong with being a solo, you know, entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. But if you are a business, you need a team. You just, you need to scale. I mean, there's, there's very few solopreneurs that reach, you know, selling companies for hundreds of millions of dollars. It just doesn't, doesn't happen. Judge, I have said, and I've said this for months and months and months, I believe, my personal belief is, my bias is, solo success is a myth, period. It is myths. There is no such thing as solo success. Even if someone holds themselves out and said, I did it, no, you didn't. There was somebody helping you because totally. you, can't, you, you, you are one human being. You are a limited resource. There is no way brain-wise, stamina-wise, financially, you're going to pull it off by yourself. You're just not. Yeah, you know, one thing, and I attribute this core, I believe this truly to my core, part of my success, a a huge majority of my success is I surrounded myself with really great team members, really smart team members. And then I empowered them to be successful and got out of the way. I think that's also, as you start to see companies grow, Mm -hmm. this, this ability not to trust your people and empower them hinders that growth. You know, it's, it's fascinating to watch companies. There's always tipping points. You either tip up or you tip down. And a lot of that is, is your culture and, and how you either empower or not empower your people to be successful. Let me ask you, how did you find your team members? 
How did you go about doing that? I mean, what was your process? Where did you find your talent? Um, one of them, the DFW market, which is a great market, but um, at first, Dallas Fort Worth, Dallas, for- Dallas Fort Worth, yeah, for sure. So, to me, I knew that if I wanted the best, especially what I was doing, I was selling people. We're in service, a service based company. Mm-hmm. I knew to acquire the best people that I had to have competitive salaries, I'd have the best benefits, I had to offer you know, dogs in the office, yoga rooms, treadmill desk. To me, those are staples. Those are cost of entry things. But I knew that I had to create a world-class culture to attract people that they wanted to be a part of this, right? It felt different. It was this intangible. So I focused those first years on how do I create this world-class culture to retain and attain the best people? And that's where I spent my time. So you'd walk into our offices and we had four core values and we had huge statues that embodied these core values. And we lived these core values. We hired our clients and fired our clients and our internal people around this. And everybody felt that they were a part of something because they were. And that becomes organic and gets out in the marketplace. And people want to be with success and they want to be with something that has momentum. They do. People crave energy. They follow the energy. When you're watching a sports, a sports thing, when you're listening to music, it's energy and they crave it. And that what you said there was platinum. It was amazing, right? That what you built and what you continue to build because you realize that people are the engine that pushes you into that totally. hundred dollar mark. Yeah, that's beautiful. Let's talk about this. You focus on your programs and you help big companies, Fortune 500 companies, Fortune 100s, you know, mid-sized companies, smaller companies, and you do your own thing as well. But you focus on, we talked about this earlier, productivity and profits or profits productivity. I should put profits first, probably. Tell me what you want the audience to know about profits and what you want them to know about productivity as far as you see it in them going to scale, say the million dollar plus mark. That's that's where they want to go, multi-millions. What do you have to say to them about profits and productivity? So for me, the results are in the work, right? So when you talk about productivity, again, a, a simple framework here, get your team aligned, clearly articulate your value proposition, map out the things you need to do in order to get there and be successful. And then it's all about dominating with massive action. It's all about productivity, Right. So I built these frameworks. Here's an example. I truly believe if you're not spending 75% of your day that day on the six to eight things that will get you closest to your revenue goal that month, you're not being effective. You're not being, you're not being product. You know, you don't have a high level of productivity. So that's what productivity is. It's identifying where you need to focus your time to generate revenue and then actually getting in and doing the work. For the businesses that want to hit that million, multi-million dollar mark, $10 million mark, and that's what I want to do, I might as well pick it. And we talked about how you went from selling pencils as a youngster to being comfortable with hundreds of millions in valuation for your companies. And you said you said two things. You said, well, I just love business and I set big goals for myself. That That's the key is setting really big goals for myself. So it, for these people watching, for the audience watching, and they want to go to that million, multi-million million dollar, $10 million market, who knows, even 50 million, a hundred million, right? What do you tell them about what success is and how to get there? How do you do that? Yeah. You, you've got to get rid of the word. I can't out of your head. It's, it's psychological noise. You know, we, we psych ourselves out so often, right? I can't look like that individual. I can't lose weight. I can't be successful. I can't ever live in a house like that. I can't ever drive a car like that. That. When you think that way, you, you've already solved it. You can't, right? You've got to say, I can, and you've got to focus on if someone else did it, we're all the same, right? You believe the same. I believe the same. If someone has done it, you can do it. We all have the same you know, ability, and you've got to get in that mindset, right? But it, it starts here. You have to psychologically say, I can versus I can't, and then you've got to get, you got to put the productivity and the work together. And, you know, I tell my clients two things. I say there's so much room at the top. And I say that because people down at the bottom levels are jockeying midway. They're still jockeying a bit, a little more comfortable, but then people stop or they retreat altogether because it's daunting to think about going further where there is no one because, and nobody makes that leap there. And the other thing I say is that 
truly, this is out there for the taking. And I ask them to fully embrace this, that this whole thing you create, this whole success journey, this whole grabbing the bigger piece to do your good work on the planet, it's there for the creating. It's literally totally. there for the creation and taking. You, you can actually make it happen. Do you, do, you, do you believe that? Is that what you tell your people? I, I totally believe it. And, and I also tell people it's okay to, to be scared. It's okay to fail. You know, I love the innocence because okay, we're all doing it <laughs> yeah. here. And there. I mean, we all do it. Right. I mean, that's just natural. It's just a given. Right. Well, and, and I love the innocence of children. Yeah. This could be construed as a fail going on a business page where we have a handful of people, but it's totally. how you look. Tell me about the innocence of children. Well, I, I can use my son as an example. He's, he's eight years old mm -hmm. and he got up in front of at a talent show of 400 people in the audience and did a whole Bruno Mars dance and routine by himself. Well, that had courage, right? And confidence. And as, as adults, we start to lose that. We, we start to get nervous and, and we're scared of failure. We're scared of rejection. And I think success at your core, you have to put yourself out there. You have to be willing to be vulnerable and you have to know, hey, it's okay to fail as long as it's not fatal. And, and I'll learn from it and I'll get better. And there's very few individuals that psychologically get past that. And I would say 80% of success is getting past that. And then it's about the work. And I, you know, I go back to the great dream makers throughout history, right through the centuries and the, the echo and the theme, and someone said it, I can't pull the name in right now, but said basically that, you know, success and all of this, you're basically living a dream. No one can see, but you. And that's why you need to keep it with you and believe in it, because even if they're there, they can't really see it the way you see it. It's been given to you to build out and do your thing with it throughout time with with success itself. So we've got the mind piece. OK, tell me about happiness for you. What was happiness, say, 10 years ago for you? What is happiness now in terms of your business success? How are you reconciling both so you're not working your life away with these massive projects you're taking on? Yeah, that's a conversation I have with my wife often. <laughs> but I, I think success 10 years ago was, you know, I always knew I had an end game. I wanted to sell a company and I was able to, to do that a few times. And so that was my goal and my outcome is I wanted to reach, you know, and, and again, for everybody, uh, financial freedom or success is, is really a personal thing. Right. But I feel that, you know, in those past 10 years, I've done that for myself. So I think that was the goal. Right. I think the goal now is much more deeper purpose that I truly want to help. You know, I get excited. You know, there, there's several people I'm mentoring now and I'm seeing them, you know, three and four X their business in a matter of a, a few months by implementing some of these fundamentals and, and seeing that joy and, and, and heading towards that financial freedom. It's, it's just awesome. It, it gives me my juice. It's great. I think what I'm hearing, and it's kind of interesting because people jump into the business owner dream, the entrepreneurial dream, all of that, but they, they end up creating a nightmare because they don't know how to break free, right? So it, it's a dream to begin, then it becomes this nightmare. And then if we're fortunate enough to find guidance like yours, you pull out of it. Now you can have the dream again, right? Tell us oh. about pro we talked about speed. We've talked about the mind piece, okay, and the profits and generating that and setting your sights high. Tell us about productivity, where you see people falling down on productivity and what they can do to turn that around. Yeah, I think uh, to me, again, it gets back to this rhythm. Once you've set those goals and the alignment, I mean, something I would encourage um, any, any companies that have a leadership team or have, you know, 20 plus people you need to have a, your companies aligned every day. I used to run meetings. So I would at, at 8.58, that was the time. It was an odd time. I'd have my executive leadership come in. We would stand around an executive conference table and we would talk about what are we doing today? What can we decide in this room and what needs to be taken offline? Those priorities got aligned. Then they would go meet with their, you know, their, their teams. And by 9.25, Every day, my organization was completely aligned from my level down to the intern, what the focus was and what they were going to start producing to be, you know, focused on productivity. And so that's key. 
How did you, it is key. I mean, you're setting a direction, but if you had to back out of it, how did you ensure if you weren't present, that same talk was had and then it was passed down to others and there was that alignment if you weren't present? Yeah, total accountability. So I was always clear with, you know, if if I was on vacation or town, there was always a number two in charge. Um, and it was it was really clear. I think one thing we we fail typically as entrepreneurs and business owners is clearly communicating, right? <laughs> like if you do this, you're going to be rewarded and compensated. You know, we if you have great people, they should share in that success. Here's what it means, and I'm gonna get you a career path. That's one piece of the communication. If like you that. don't do these things, here is the outcome, right? That could potentially happen. You'll lose your job or whatever. Once you have your team aligned on the expectations, then a lot of that noise goes away. So when you get a when you have a company that's in rhythm, all of the hey, do you have a minute or the painful meetings and the un, you know unproductive things, they just go away. Because when you're aligned and you've clearly communicated expectations, th there's nothing that has ambiguity. And when you operate with no gray, you just focus on success and outcomes. I'm thinking, I'm thinking about winning in business. You creating, you are creating winning teams to do that. Totally. You know, Bill, Bill Belichick does, it's a great quote. I don't remember if it was a book or it was a, he said, listen, we will win football games. Even if I don't have the best players, if you guys just all line up and execute your position, every play, we're going to win. Mm -hmm. And now if we have great players, we're going to win a Super Bowl, right? So business is, is not much different. Get the right people, put them in the right positions, tell them what they're accountable for, reward them, and, and charge forward. Okay, great. So with the happiness piece and the going forward piece, your team piece, and you've talked about in your employees' happiness. So I want to put that in there too, right? That your winning team, their happiness mattered as much. And we talked about success. So where you are now for happiness, what does it look like going forward for you as you keep building? What are you, what are you going to do differently? What do you, what is your goal for happiness? Uh, happiness is uh, just finding a balance. Uh, you know, my, I've got two boys, they're six and eight. So I want to be a part of, of that. So I want some flexibility in, in, in my lifestyle. And, um, you know, I think there's some travel on the horizon and then as well as again, my juice is helping companies. I'm helping several right now. And, and I love it. I love jumping into the trenches and I love putting things together and building cultures. And so I don't see any of that going away anytime soon. When you look at the key component for success and success in having business, and I know there's some people watching the replay thinking, well, I wasn't an entrepreneur as a child, right? It, and it came to me later. And I left corporate, but I always had an entrepreneurial spirit. But there are a lot of people in corporate who have it who are leaving and doing entrepreneurial things. What is the number one trait, if I had to put you on the spot right now, of successful business owners, successful companies, the people who start them and run them and sell them? What's the number one trait? Flexibility. Yeah. Tell us about that. So I, I think if uh, you're not flexible, whether it's your expectations or, you know, outcomes, dealing with things that happen that aren't planned, you're, you're not going to be able to roll with the punches per se, right? To use that analogy. I think flexibility is so key, right? Specifically now how fast things are moving. You know, your business model overnight could be irrelevant. Well, you've got to be pretty flexible to wake up that morning and adjust. You know, um, I, I can give you a story. I was my first sale. Um, imagine this. I was in the shower. It was four days away from closing my first company sale ever. And I get out and my business partner had just had breakfast with our largest client that at the time was 33% of our revenue. They fired us that morning. <laughs> so literally... Our buyer, four days away from closing, backed out of the deal, and I had to get up in front of 100 people and let go 50 and explain to everybody, we're going to be flexible and we're going to figure this out and go back and, and do it. So you got to be flexible. It takes, it takes a lot of ability. you know. And, and I laced up, and six months later, uh, we were higher than where we were, and I had the same buyer come back at a, at a higher price. But if I didn't have that flexibility, it would have been an issue.
You know, I listen to you and I, I just keep thinking, <clears throat> excuse me, no guts, no glory. That's just kind of what I think. It just, you know, you've lived a very gutsy, gutsy life. Totally. Um, yeah. And then you're basically a self-taught entrepreneur. You said you had a senior business partner, partner who was 20 years your senior who helped you with some of the ropes. You read your 100 books. What else do you attribute to being able to build this kind of massive success besides everything you've described? Anything else you want to throw in there? Yeah, I think I have a pretty good EQ versus IQ. And I think that's really important, right? Again, I, I firmly believe that um, taking care of your people and aligning yourself with the right people and understanding when something's real and when something's not in those intangibles have, have led me to become successful. So I think I, I do really well at, at judging and reading um, situations and, and people and, and motivating to, to scale with speed. Okay, good. Just out of curiosity, what do you do for fun? <laughs> uh, for fun? I you know, it, build companies and sell them for hundreds of millions of dollars. Anything else you do in there? <laughs> I, uh, I love cars. I think cars are, are, are a lot of fun. So I, I, I play with um, different cars and things. Um, you know, I'm immersed right now in, in my boys. They're in all kinds of different sports. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I like to uh, work out, but really uh, business is my hobby. You know, I mean, I, I really think that I mean, I mean, I love it. I mean, I'm always doing it. And, and at this point, it's it's more because I love it than anything. Okay, great. So judgegram.com. I'm going to have a link. I'm going to go ahead and drop that on my business page. You can also great. find in the show notes at boomtank.com. I'm going to download this live stream and place it on boomtank.com. So in the show notes, you will also find a link to judge. Is there anything else that you want to promote here today? Anything else you want to put out there so the audience knows about you and what you're offering? Yeah, no, I I think the biggest thing I'd love, I'm trying to build, um, again, I'm on this new journey of positivity, uh, productivity, and profitability, um, all with the idea and the concept of scaling with speed. Uh, My new book will be, um, you can pre-order it now, but it'll be out in about 120 days, uh, scale with speed. But visit my website, um, follow me on Facebook, Instagram. I'm constantly doing videos and blog posts and podcasts and I'm um, just building a, a community that wants, you know, positive and productivity and uh, profitability. And that's really my my journey. Yeah. And I just love your focus on scaling with speed because this languishing, it's so unnecessary that so many businesses go through. Yeah, it's just wonderful to have that on the other side. So when you your book drops, let me know and I will update the show link over at boomtank.com. And I'd love to talk yep. to you about when, it, when you release it. I think that's going to yeah, be yeah. And you can pre it's 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 ready for pre order right now, but yeah, it'll be out in about 120 days. Okay, great. Judge, thank you very much for joining us here today on the Winning in Business Live Show. Again, I'm Carolyn Cole of Boomtank.com, so check out Boomtank.com. This is one of my three shows. I have a regular global podcast, and that's audio on iTunes and all those platforms I talked about earlier. And this is one of my two new live stream shows for the summer. Catch the other show every Thursday at noon, and that's called Is It Me or My Business? Question and Answers for Your Business Issues. And then, of course, Winning in Business Live every Tuesday, noon, Eastern Standard Time, high noon. So thank you for joining us. High noon today. Actually, we're a few minutes thank off. Thank you. Technology. It was a pleasure. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Okay, Judge. Thank you very much. Why don't you hang out while I, while I end the broadcast? I still want to okay. talk to you. Okay. All right. Thank you so much again. Honored. It was a great interview. Really appreciate all the help you brought the audience today. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay. Take oh, care. Bye. Be right back. 